Good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the final Core Ledger webinar of 2020. My name is Samuel Miller. I work with the marketing and sales teams here at Core Ledger, and I will be introducing today's events, which is all about modernizing barter economies. We thought this would be the perfect topic to wrap the year up with, as it touches on a lot of the themes we've been discussing in our recent webinars and content, as we've argued for practical, realistic blockchain solutions to global problems. It's also a very timely topic as we consider 2021's post-pandemic economic situation. Digital barter is also the topic of our most recent ebook, which was just published this week. So if you're interested in barter economies and blockchain, please do check that out on our website. It's available to read for free. On today's agenda, uh, in just a moment, Core Ledger's co-founder and CEO, Hannes Schweifer, will set the scene by talking about the origins and history of money before explaining how and why blockchain changes this whole picture. Then he'll discuss how tokenization and trade sequences can make barter economies relevant again for our digital world. After that, we'll have some time for discussion. So if you do have any questions, comments, or discussion points, you'll see a Q&A button on the left side of your screen. If you just click on that, then you can type your questions in. And at the end, we will do our very best to answer them. So that's it for me for the moment. I will pass the mic off to Hannes. So good evening, everyone. My name is Johannes Speifer. Most of you know me already. Uh, I'm actually a chemist and uh, I co-founded a couple of companies here in Crypto Valley, among them Bitcoin Swiss in 2013. And uh, I also co-founded Core Ledger. And at Core Ledger, we are doing um, blockchain integration into business processes. And yes, I'm occasionally writing uh, articles or ebooks or um, different um, opinion pieces about uh, blockchain relevant topics and one of them is absolutely my field of profession which is uh, honestly uh, in the area of alchemist modern alchemistic methods which is an alchemist's guide to digital barter so today's webinar will be mostly about this topic and uh, actually how blockchain can assist with solving uh, centuries or even thousand years old problem the origin of money when we look back in very simple societies, it was totally easy to exchange one good for another good, one product or service for another, simply because there were not too many uh, for choice. However, when societies become more complex, when economic interactions become more complex and the range of products is big, then you end up having a multitude of different products which could be swapped for each other. And at some point, it simply does not work anymore with I trade a cow and cows are all different, actually. And uh, trading that for a piece of wood, what kind of wood, firewood, um, oak, wood, whatever. So due to complexity, the whole barter system became a problem. And especially one problem was um, difficult to solve or not possible to solve sufficiently, which is fragmentation of things you couldn't easily trade a piece of a cow not if the cow should survive the whole process and uh, trade it into a, a so-called sequence where in a situation where nobody would trade a cow for a pair of shoes um, you need to exchange it a couple of times in order to reach the destination um, product so that's a complication that was easily solved by the introduction of money so the reason why money exists at all was simply its necessity as the uh, ultimate good for trade. So exchanging or swapping products and services for money, monetary items, means having the liquidity in order to purchase those same items. Again, well, not the same, but different ones, but you know what I mean. So um, you only have um, a very small uh, number of trades at least um, you'd only need trade pairs between products and services and the money and leading from there again so from money to products and services and not crisscross um, from products to products so that was a huge improvement and actually up to today it still is uh, an improvement which powers our entire um, economy nonetheless in every market, you always have uh, winners and losers. So when it comes to um, 
avoiding having to uh, find a trading partner, which is due to complexity almost impossible to directly swap shoes for um, wood, for example. Then you have a third party, which and maybe many third parties, which exchange the shoes for money and the same for wood. And of course, they take a margin. There's nothing wrong in that. At least they deliver a service to the economy. So it's totally legit and just that they claim a margin. However, if there was a possibility to avoid that third party and trade and swap directly, then both parties could actually trade at a 0% margin and each of them would save 1%. So if we um, put that into perspective, today's trade has a volume of many, many, many trillions. Um, that could be an enormous amount of saving. So it's still um, something which would be absolutely interesting today. So the point is, do we have the means and capabilities and technology today to solve that old problem, which I highlighted, um, which is finding of trade pairs and fragmentation and different other things. Let us look on blockchain. What can it do? So one of the um, biggest features of blockchain is actually uh, creating digital twins of real items. These digital twins we call tokens, and that is nothing more than just an IOU. So it's a, a claim, a digital claim to something physical, tangible, or maybe an intangible, like a patent or whatever. So it can be anything. The token, however, is the claim to the real world item. It definitely solves the problem of tokenization and fragmentation. So if you have a cow, the cow could survive and the fragmentation because the fragmentation is just a, a non-physical logical representation on blockchain in the form of token you can fragment it into two three four five thousand millions of pieces it doesn't matter and it certainly doesn't affect the cow and there is another feature um, probably the most important one which is not possible in the in the real world but it is on blockchain, which is the so-called atomic swap. In the real world, it is always possible if you offer one good in exchange for another one, that the counterparty would simply default on its promise and would not deliver. It still can happen when you exchange the claim for the real good, but not if you exchange claims. So one claim being swapped against another, like gold being swapped for commodity, would mean in the situation of an atomic swap that it's not possible that only gold changes the owner, but the commodity token would not um, be transferred to the other party. Atomic means both transactions happen at the very same time. They are not separated. So either the entire transaction happens at all, or it does not happen. So no, no win, no gain in the worst situation. What does that mean if we put it into perspective and if we put it into use for barter trading? Again, the example from before, trading of, um, one twenty-fifth piece of a cow for some pieces of wood, some pieces of fish and the pair of shoes. If a transaction chain in the real world would be uh, just stopped somewhere in between. For example, the pair of shoes have, have already has already been so, uh, sold. So you uh, slaughtered the cow, you spent 1 25th of the poor cow uh, on wood and later on fish. You can't use the fish anymore to exchange it into shoes. That means you're stuck with the fish. You never wanted the fish in the first place. Um, you wanted either to retain the cow or the pair of shoes. And that's something blockchain can solve easily. How does it solve it? It solves it by so-called transaction sequences. That is nothing else but linked atomic swaps. Linked in, the, in such a sense that they are put into a single atomic transaction, which runs end to end and either happens end to end with all parties uh, which are part of that transaction being satisfied, or it does not happen at all. Again, no win, no gain, um, but also no loss. So in a situation where we try to apply this on a barter economy, 
using blockchain, it all boils down to mathematics. And that math mathematics is solvable uh, with today's um, capabilities. So it is just about finding a path from the good which you offer to the good which you want to acquire. And that is something which can easily be assisted with search engines. So to put it in a nutshell, what we achieve with using blockchain for barter trading is actually a web of value where individual nodes, and these nodes are the assets, can be um, linked with offers, these we call supplies, and um, a path through these offers, through these assets, or across actually the entire space of assets would be what we call a token warp. And if all that happens transparently, then um, values are just moved the same way as data is moved across the internet. You don't notice any servers when you do any uh, transactions or when you do when you use the internet. So servers are transparent. And in our analogy, the values in between, which you don't want, which are just in the intermediate steps in your entire transaction chain, they are transparent as well. So mathematics and blockchain can solve for centuries and even um, millennia old problem, which is the finding of trade partners. And the advantage of that is, of course, that you can cut out individual middlemen and make the entire trade and barter situation much more efficient and cheaper than using money. So that was today a rather short webinar, and um, it's mostly about highlighting the possibilities which um, we have with using blockchain technology um, for such, such an old problem like the barter trading situation. Barter still lives with certain communities, but thanks to this new technology, uh, it can now also be applied in a much broader sense. So thank you very much. And if there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right, thanks very much, Hannes. We do have a few questions from the audience. Just a reminder to anyone, if you'd like to contribute something or discuss something, um, on the left side of your screen, you'll see the Q&A button. You can click on that and ask away. So first up, I think this question is a bit of a challenge for you, Hannes. Uh, is all of this just an attempt to make money obsolete? Um, well, um, it could, of course, happen that uh, by applying this technology um, to today's trade and, and, and using it for today's economy, that money would be less important um, than it is today. Uh, but it is definitely not in our um, intention <laughs> that money disappears. So it's not an attempt to make money obsolete, but if it happens, well, <laughs> it could happen. Um, okay, another another challenging question. Do you really think that these digital borrower models can actually be used in today's modern financial markets? Depends, of course, um, whether it's really um, a, a one to one um, analogy according to what I've shown, really a barter economy or just um, something which is similar. Uh, imagine, for example, internal accounting in companies that uh, okay he doesn't use barter but it uses money but nonetheless such warp transaction sequences atomic sequences um, can be used there in order to just settle individual claims by different parties and by different departments so for that um, the barter with just a single um, uh, good some monetary value can be applied but of course, um, there are um, um, countries which have a very dire economic situation right now, and there barter really happens. Argentina, for example. Argentina is a country where they have a huge inflation and people tend to trade um, real items, real goods, instead of using money for certain transactions, simply because money loses value. So it's not functioning as a store of value anymore. And if you use something else as store of value, why not using that um, in order to transact directly? So in such economies, barter trading, especially assist assisted with modern tools like blockchain can absolutely work. So that's an example. Furthermore, um, barter is not extinct, not at all. So it's not some relic from the medieval past. 
it still exists in many, many, many countries. Only in uh, Western civilization, um, we have become used to money, but uh, um, Latin America, Africa, there are still many communities just bartering. And again, new technology and new tools uh, could help to make that more efficient and um, also um, not jump across borders or um, uh, just remove boundaries which otherwise exist. So what happens if tokens are fraudulent and aren't actually backed by anything? That is a good question. I could play that back and ask what happens if the, the alleged gold, which is somewhere in Fort Knox, is not actually there. <laughs> so the very same happens. Um, if a claim is not backed by anything, then that's, of course, fraudulent. Blockchain cannot change anything with that. It can, of course, assist with adding um, documentation to it, adding third-party certification that some assets exist. And especially when there is a multitude of different assets um, uh, for, for, for choice, then um, as a consumer, you would pick those which have the highest rating or the best certification of all of them. But of course, blockchain technology does not change anything um, with respect to, to um, conversion into the real asset. So there, it still needs trust. Okay. Um, how can a tendering platform be arranged so that it covers a variety of needs in a global situation? How can, sorry, what platform? A tendering platform. Tendering platform, what does that mean? I'm not sure. I'll ask for a clarification here. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the meantime, we have another question. Um, does TIO support this barter functionality out of the box? Theos supports, uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the whole system has been built around um, the conversion of values and especially that seamless conversion of values. So the warp was the first functionality which we built into the smart contracts. So yep, it supports it 100%. In a uh, exchange situation, will the largest token exchanges uh, prevail? Or is there still room for smaller competition? Mm, depends on whether we are speaking about decentralized or centralized exchanges. So um, blockchain is not known to be a high throughput um, or at least a high frequency market. So um, everything which needs high frequency trading would, of course, need something which runs off chain. And then all the on chain solutions would not help much, but it could help with transfer of claims between certain centralized uh, exchanges and uh, doing settlement um, in between individual participants. So um, I don't think that this technology would um, make centralized exchanges or big exchanges obsolete at all. And if we're talking about exchanges in the sense of um, stock exchange or whatever, um, or even commodities markets, um, maybe the commodity markets could become obsolete because then it's not about speculation anymore but about well real um uh, so transfer of commodities between parties and not again not uh, the speculation so potentially um the speculative part of um, commodity and in general uh, asset trading uh, would be suppressed somehow or would be diminished this i firmly believe so the more blockchain processes um, become part of today's life um the less speculative the whole thing could become so uh, you just touched on this a little bit with the uh, exchange question but um to go back to the the tendering question what the the attendee was asking was uh for these global trade platforms how how does one arrange a system whereby people can ask what they need uh, to people who have what they need and how basically how can these trade situations be arranged on a platform in a global situation oh no i understand the question well um it just requires two things um the assets as well as the the offers they need to be um globally available in other words they need to be put on blockchain so if 
for asset is on chain. That's the first requirement and uh, the most important one, of course. And if there is um, an offer, uh, um, like I trade grain and not just some grain, but some uh, dedicated, some, some grain with a unique ID um, for leather. And again, um, also leather with a unique ID by a certain producer and so forth. Um, then, and if that exists on chain, then a search engine can find uh, just paths from um, this trade to wherever it, it should lead me. So um, it's only about data availability. And if that's globally available, then that's the solution to that uh, or the answer to that question. So anybody can basically participate in that market by just creating assets and uh, creating such offers. And um, then it's just a matter of combining them and uh, running the entire token warp. Um, since everything is on chain, there is no possibility that there is any cheat in the transaction or um, that you get stuck as I've shown before. So either it runs or it does not. Okay. If margins are added to each of the offers in a chain, then won't the trade chain become very expensive? And how would you handle this? Good question. Um, in general, by using such a system, you save on the margin, uh, which is claimed by the third party. So uh, removing the third party out of the equation already means saving, as I've shown before. But that still does not mean that there is zero margin. Um, it can, of course, happen that um, the entire transaction sequence is um, expensive at the end, but there will be certainly not be just one transaction sequence so there will be many and um, if the customer if the, the buyer has a choice then they will of course choose the the um, most efficient and the cheapest one with the best exchange rate for him so as long as he has the choice um, he can choose what he wants if there is only one okay then bad luck um, but the availability of, of, of different options that is the strength of such a system. And the fact that it's not controllable by any third parties, uh, which um, offers get created and which do not. So anybody who um, would try to corner the market by shorting something, um, well, um, could face a certain difficulty because well, we are talking about a decentralized market and not a centralized any, anymore. So, um, uh, to put it in a nutshell, so it can happen that uh, margins are added up and the end result in the conversion rate is hi highly unfavorable, uh, favorable. but it could also happen that due to the multitude of different offers, that's a question of liquidity, um, there will always be um, a, a, an exchange rate which is at near 0% margin. Okay. Is there any compatibility between a digital barter economy and an existing uh, credit system? For example, tokenizing credit and then exchanging it for a, a physical good? There is the possibility to um, just exist alongside each other, of course. Um, so um, tokenized credit could also be part of the barter system. So there is no... Um, no rule which prohibits um, traditional financial instruments from not being part of the very same platform. So barter is just an extreme example of um, avoiding money altogether. But if you put also money into that equation, then why not? So it can it can exist in parallel with each other. It can be even be merged with each other. So um, imagine the transaction sequence which which I've shown and put. Um, some some financial instruments uh, instruments somewhere in between, like conversion from wood into shares of a certain company. If it exists on the same system, it would work. Or uh, insert money, um, maybe some exotic one, doesn't matter. That could happen, for example, in international trade. So um, some currencies could, could be part of, of such trade sequences. So it's not exclusive, not at all. Okay. What happens if a trade in one of these trade sequences needs to be rolled back? Is this possible? That is um, a problem because it can't be rolled back. 
<laughs> that's one of the cornerstones of blockchain technology. So either it it works, I mean, it, it works end to end or it does not. But um, things which get written for the blockchain can't be made undone. So if one transaction or one um, exchange, which is part of an atomic sequence of trades, um, needs to be rolled back, then <laughs> it can be done um, bilaterally, but uh, not for all parties. Because uh, one of the uh, real and, 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 and uh, most solid pillars of, of blockchain, let's call it the unwritten law, is that you shall never take tokens from an address for which you don't have the private key unless those tokens have been offered, I don't know, <laughs> somehow, somehow through a decentralized or other market. Because um, that means um, just violating um, the, the, not privacy, but uh, what I want to say. Um, um, only if you are the owner of the private key, um, you shall be able to, to um, send uh, tokens or values uh, from your address to some other address. So if a transaction needs to be rolled back for many parties, then uh, either all these parties agree on that, but that's kind of unlikely. So there would be a third party saying, um, I decide to roll that back. And in such a situation, you um, have, I mean, you need to just take tokens from an address for which you don't have the private key uh, without these parties' consent. And that is something which I called the unwritten law of blockchain technology. So that is not possible in, in normal uh, blockchains and also not in those which we are using. So a transaction once being committed, or rather once being confirmed, um, can't be rolled back. All right. Is anyone already doing this with blockchain? Is, it, is there any sort of large scale barter economy that's run on blockchain at the moment? Um, we are starting individual pro projects in certain countries right at the moment and playing uh, through various use cases. So um, at the moment, I'm not aware of any large scale barter project on blockchain, but um, stay tuned with us on LinkedIn and then you might hear from the one or the other in the quite near future. All right, thank you. I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, I wanna thank you all again for joining us. If you do have any more questions or if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can either write to us or schedule a call through our website. And we'd love to hear from you. As always, we're also on social media. So please do follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Medium, and also on YouTube where you'll find a recording of this webinar in case you want to refer back, as well as past webinars. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we also have a newly published and free to read ebook on the topic of digital barter. So that's it for today and for the year. So from all of us at Core Ledger, hope you have a healthy holiday season, and we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar in January. Good evening. Thank you very much. Stay healthy. Goodbye. <laughs>